Well, they're taking the civilization out of Canada's landmark museum across the river here in Gatineau. The Canadian Museum of Civilization will be renamed the Canadian Museum of History and get a $25 million upgrade. Heritage Minister James Moore joins me to talk about it. James, it's a lot more than just a renaming. Tell us what this museum will look like in 2017 for our 150th birthday. Not taking the civilization out of it, but actually building on an incredible legacy of success that the museum has had. The Canadian Museum of Civilization is, in fact, the largest museum in Canada. It's over a million square feet, uh, three and a half million artifacts and uh, items in its collection. And what we want to do is building towards Canada's 150th birthday in 2017 is turn it into the Canadian Museum of History. As you know, you've talked about it on the show. I think I've actually been on here talking about it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when the Historic Dominion Institute or others put out surveys showing that young Canadians don't know a great deal about Canada's history, that it's often frustrating, disappointing, and sometimes embarrassing and I think we can do better and there are limited tools that the government of Canada has but one of the things that we can do is take this incredible museum with the great legacy that it has refocus it and rebrand it and reorient it towards talking about Canada's history it has done some of that in the past and we want to build on that and move it forward now you know of course people will say oh those conservatives they love the Queen they like the war of 1812 they're gonna twist history around and make us into a warrior nation it's not gonna really reflect our history how can you assure them this isn't gonna turn into some sort of rebranding exercise for Canadian history. Well, first, debunk the myth. I mean, you know, look, we already have a war museum. We're not building another war museum. This is about Canadian history. Right. And today at the announcement, we had, you know, the van from Terry Fox and his Marathon of Hope. We had uh, Samuel de Champlain's Astrolab that he used to help create and discover Canada. We have uh, on display the last spike that was driven in my home province of British Columbia just outside of Kamloops to bring BC into Confederation. So this is about all of Canada's history, not focused narratives on it. And for those who suggest, you know, that we're uh, in any way implicating ourselves in the specifics of the day to day, it's not true. I mean, the Museums Act by law prevents me as the minister or any politician from telling the museum what it can or can't display. So that's not at all what this is about. This is a good faith, nonpartisan effort to actually try to do a better job of talking about Canada's narrative. The United States has the Smithsonian, the Germany has a German history museum. There, there are things that we can do as a country. And that's why I'm pleased at the announcement as well that uh, we had you know, historians and museum association groups from across the country and all different political views, yeah. by the way, supporting it. Elizabeth May, leader of the Green Party, has said that she supports the initiative. Jean Chrétien last night said he thought it was a good idea. So uh, I think it's um, a nonpartisan, good faith effort to do what's good for Canada. Yeah. Is there any history you think is particularly neglected? And I I don't, I mean, I always sometimes look at you know, the War of 1812, we weren't even a country back then, and yet we've glorified it a lot, and yet, as you know, there was some talk, the Charter of Rights only got a press release this year on its anniversary. How, how do you, how can you say, or what do you think should be more, a greater focus on these museums? You've never been shy about giving your opinions before. Um, well, look, I, I just think broadly speaking, there, there's not a great deal, um, well, we can do better. Put it this way: we, you know, in only four. Yep, but Normandy. And well, Dieppe, yep, Normandy for sure. But look, in only four of Canada's ten provinces, is it mandatory for a student in high school to take a history class to graduate from high school? Four. Four out of ten. four to ten. And so, you know, that's I think pretty paltry. And you see it in the polls and the surveys about uh, our young young Canadians' um, understanding of Canada's history. So we can do better. And it's not just about naming prime ministers or knowing dates and all that. There's a great one of my favorite favorite quotes about education. William Bennett, who is Education Secretary in the United States, he talked about history and he said history is not about filling buckets but lighting fires and encouraging people for life to always be curious and thoughtful and, and looking forward to things and in Canada we have a remarkable group of historians <clears throat> who've done great work think about Richard Gwynn's two books on Johnny MacDonald um, you know the, the ph phenomenal book Champlain's Dream I mean whenever Canada's historians put forward books and movies and, and, and things that remind us of our past, um, Canadians respond and they want to see it and they want to read about it and think about it. And I, and I think this is what we're going to do is create a pan-Canadian platform for the teaching of Canadian history. One thing that uh, came out of the announcement that I find quite intriguing is the idea of starting to link museums up across the country and have good exhibits rotating through the museums. How will that work? That, very good point. And so the museum, the Museum of Civilization, will now be the Canadian Museum of History. But what we're going to do is we're going to have partner museums all across the country. And this is one thing that I found as Minister of Heritage. I've had the privilege to be able to travel around the country. And sometimes little local museums all across the country have some of the most incredible holdings and artifacts in all of Canada. It's, it's fantastic. But very often these museums have the same holdings and they've been on display for 30 or 40 years. And we want to get stuff moving around the country. 33.5 million artifacts are at the museum, what will be the Museum of History now. The vast majority of them, more than three quarters, are in storage. Wow. And we want to get them out, spill them across the country, and tell stories and allow local museums, at no cost to them, to be able to have access to these artifacts, to build narratives that they want to talk about the history of women in science, or they want to talk about A.Y. Jackson, or if they want to talk about, uh, you know, 
aspects of Canadian uh, democracy in, in all of its forms, they're free to do so, and they'll have access to this database and these collections and to get Canadians talking about our history. Very quickly, 150 years isn't very far away. What, what else have you got in mind? Anything else, or is this the signature uh, celebration? It, it'll be one of the central items because actually what we're doing, and again, this doesn't end in 2017 for our 150th, but what we really are doing is building a pan-Canadian infrastructure for the celebration and discussion of Canada's history and the study of it for forever, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, Canada is the second largest country in the world, but in terms of population, we're the 34th largest. We're large, but we're spread out, and to be able to connect Canadians, to tell Canadian stories one to another is, I think, a really important legacy. Good. Heritage Minister James Moore, thanks for coming on. Pleasure.